Hello everybody and welcome to day four of the Spaces Between Your Fingers project. I'm here at the Budget, Budget Host Inn, formerly known as the Aloha Inn, uh, just out, about 10 miles outside of Madison, Wisconsin. I'm um, just enjoying my breakfast here, which is a cup full of Raisin Bran. Uh, the milk's just at the bottom and I uh, found out that if I tilt it at just the right angle, uh, well, evidently in the time since I set up the camera, it's gone a little bit soggy, but um, it's a good breakfast nonetheless, and it's been a good trip so far. Um, it occurs to me that since it's near the beginning of the trip still, uh, what I'd like to do is uh, bring you here behind the scenes and show you a little bit uh, uh, about what I've been doing and what my days are like. And so, uh, if you're wondering what my nights are like, um, what you can see here is a giant stack of oversized postcards. Now, I have thousands more of these in my car, but it's been my goal to bring in 100 each night, and you'll notice that every single one of these cards now has a stamp on it. That's because uh, before I left, I walked into the post office and I said, uh, good morning, um, and I purchased 3,000 stamps. Um, when you purchase that volume of stamps, what they do is they give them to you in these giant batons. And these batons can be broken up, and when you break them down, you get little rings, and each one of these rings has 100 stamps on it. And when you sit in your hotel room, uh, long enough putting stamps on, the ring turns into this and all hundred of the stamps are now on the cards and I'm ready to go for day four. Um, what I'd like to do before I get going today is um, I think the best way that I can bring you into this experience is to tell you a little bit about the people that I've been meeting um, and the experiences and the encounters that I've been having on the road. Um, and so I'll pick one, just one from day three. Uh, what I did is I got up early uh, and left Chicago and I decided to get off the highway and so what I did was um, I decided to wind up the western shore of Lake Michigan, and so I was kind of coming in and out of these little towns, um, meeting all kinds of different people. Um, the first stop I actually made was at a prison um, in a town called Racine, and so uh, I pulled right into the prison, pulled right in the parking lot, got my cards, and I walked right in, uh, you know, confident, and then I walked directly out about 10 seconds later because I was not allowed to be there. Uh, but I, I, in that time, I did manage to give one card to a security guard, and he promised me that he would send it in, and so we got one of them coming in. Um, so then I got some lunch, and I was coming in and out and meeting all kinds of different people. And uh, sometime in the afternoon, I was just south of Milwaukee, and I found myself in an assisted living facility. Uh, this was the second assisted living facility I'd been in that day. Um, what I did is that I learned from the first one, and so this time I walked up to the counter and I said, uh, I just asked if I could speak to someone who's in charge of activities. I told them I was doing an arts project, and she said, sure. Um, but the lady, she's at lunch, would you mind just waiting here for about 20 minutes? Are you in a rush? And so I said, no, I'm not in a rush. Um, so I was sitting in this waiting area, and if you can imagine it, it was just um, about the size of your living room, and, but there's four chairs in it, two, two on each side facing each other, and a giant grandfather clock. Uh, so I'm just kind of sitting there killing time, and uh, this old woman wheeled in, uh, who I quickly found out was her husband. And I could tell right away, because um, if you've read the story, um, you know that my grandfather uh, had Alzheimer's. And one of the things I remember about his last days is that um, my grandmother begin, began to um, finish his sentences for him. And so, um, toward the end, um, he would just be sitting there and everything um, that she said, she'd say, well, you're hungry, right, Bill? And he would say, right, Peg. And she would say, well, it's nice outside today, isn't it, Bill? And she'd say, and he'd say, right, Peg. And these two who, who came into this waiting area had the same dynamic going, and so I knew right away that they were husband and wife. Um, and, but there was one point when she stopped talking, and uh, that was because this grandfather clock started going nuts. It started uh, chiming and going back and forth, and this guy was mesmerized by it, and he said, there's something wrong with that clock. And she said, well, you fixed enough of them, you should know what's wrong with it. And he started saying about how something was wrong with um, the inner mechanism. I, I couldn't even tell you what, what he was saying because it was so technical because it turned out that he was a clockmaker. And so what she did was for about the next 10 minutes she wheeled him ab about the distance I am from the camera right now to the clock. And for a good solid 10 minutes he just watched the long arm of this grandfather clock just swing back and forth. Um, and he had this kind of sad look on his face and just kind of watched it go back and forth. Um, but as, as he c continued to watch, the kind of sad look went away and he just was in this kind of peaceful state, um, just watching this clock. And so while he was doing that, his wife started talking to me and she said, uh, well, what are you doing here? Are you visiting somebody? And I said, well, uh, it's kind of a funny story. Um, so I told her about what I was doing and she asked um, 
if she could have a card. And she actually asked, um, she said, can I give you money for it? Uh, which uh, I can't believe, I've been told that like five times. I've been offered money for these cards. Um, they're saying, well, were you selling something? I said, no, 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 it's, it's the opposite actually. I've taken care of the postage. You just need to uh, just fill it out and drop it in a mailbox. Um, so to kind of bring the story to a close, I realized that uh, I'm rambling. I'm not much of an order, I'm more of a writer, in which case I can go back and cut all this out. Um, but I can tell you that how it ended was I did end up getting the meeting with the lady and she said that she would take cards that had um, a, whole, a whole wide range of ages. And, and so I, I left a number of cards with them there and as I was walking out, um, I saw the husband and the wife, they were still in the waiting room and she was trying to explain the project to him. And she actually said it better than I described it on the card, because uh, I said if your time was short. And she said, if this was your last day on earth, what would you say to me? And, and he must not have heard it because she said it again, you know, if this was your last day on earth, what would you say to me? And I couldn't hear what he said, but he whispered something in her ear. Um, and I have no idea what he said. Um, but I'm hoping that um, this would be one of the many cards that will find its way back um, into a mailbox and then, and then back to me. And then hopefully uh, I will post them and, and everyone can see. So we'll just have to wait um, what advice this old man would have given. Um, so I've got a long day ahead of me. I'm heading into Madison now and hopefully up to Minneapolis by tonight. And so uh, I'll try and check back with you soon. And uh, I miss you all, and I'll see you soon.